<clears throat> Good morning. Welcome to the press briefing for the Pasco fires. Um, I'm going to start with um, the campground fire that's right over here. That still remains the same, 75 acres, 100% um, contained. We, we put a, uh, 1,600 gallons of water on that yesterday. We're continuing mop up. We have widened and improved the lines around it and the cause for that was lightning. The Silver Palms fire that is by 589 um, and in, is in Suncoast Lakes, that is 50 acres. It's 60% contained. Um, they did a back burn yesterday and I'll have somebody explain that and they, they'll talk to what they did yesterday and what their plans are for today. The South Bike Trail, which is down at Starkey Park. Um, they worked that to late last night, so there is an increase in acreage because they did a burnout. So that's 150 acres, 40% contained, causes incendiary. They do have lines all around it. Um, they ran into a big dry swamp, which is why they had to do the burnout. And they have some contingency lines even farther out. I'm going to mention a fire that was in Hudson last night. That fire is called the South Wind Fire off of Old Dixie Highway. That was 18 acres. It's 100% contained. It was incendiary. Uh, we believe a cigarette started that. We dropped 30 buckets of water on it and we'll continue mop up on that today. We're gonna hold all questions to the end, if you would please, and uh, we'll be available to answer any questions, but if we could just get our, all, everybody on camera first, that would be awesome. I'm gonna bring up John DeWolf. He is the incident commander from Florida Forest Service and he is working the Silver Palm fire and he can explain a little bit about the operations at Silver Palm. Good morning. Uh, yesterday, our operations on the Silver Palm fire went really good. Uh, we did a burnout on the west side of the fire and what that means, we just burn out some of the remaining uh, higher ground vegetation or fuels. Uh, between the main swamp that's been on fire for the last few days and our fire lines and that went really well um, today we're going to continue those operations on the south end of the fire behind the homes between the homes and the swamp uh, we're taking a slow approach around there and we're going to try to get all those homes secured by this afternoon is our game plan and we also have some mowing and dozer crews working from the bike trail on the east side to try to tie in to the subdivision also um, so hopefully um, our plan is by this afternoon we can up this containment considerably and uh, start to bring this thing to a close. Thank you. The piece of equipment John's talking about is our posi track. So that mulches and we've mulched behind those homes. So we're trying to move the woods back away from the houses. So that, that process will continue today. Um, now I'm going to bring up Brian Prill. He's the incident commander for the um, South Bike Trail fire to talk about the operations last night and today. Brian? Okay, the South Bike Trail fire was a new start from yesterday. Um, we were working the campground fire, saw a new column of smoke coming up, so we went down, located it. Uh, we originally caught it, for the most part, at about 55 acres but one side got off into a dry swamp again. We walked all in through the swamp. We cannot find any water standing in there and the timber is too big to put equipment in. Therefore, we had no choice other than to fall back from that and burn out last night once the conditions became favorable. So that's why it went to 150 acres was we had to do about an 80 something acre burnout of that swamp. Um, it does have lines all around it. There's crews actively working it now and hopefully we'll be able to bump that uh, percentage of containment up by this afternoon. We got it in a box, we're just going to keep it in the box. So. And with the South Bike Trail, uh, Silver Palms and Campground, no structures have been damaged at this point. There's no structures threatened as, as now. Um, now I'm going to bring up John to talk about the fire department, what they're doing on this. Sean White for Pasco Fire Rescue. 
uh, today we've put on uh, some auxiliary equipment. We brought in some uh, people from on overtime to man that equipment. They're, they're brush units. They're basically out assisting uh, the Florida Forest Service on the three fires that we're working still. Uh, they're there to help them if they need anything, and then they're also available for any new fires that pop up today. Hopefully we won't have any today, but uh, just to confirm, we did have three outbuildings that were destroyed in uh, Hudson. Uh, they were all sheds, two were very small sheds, and then we had a tractor trailer that was loaded with uh, tires that caught fire and was destroyed. Other than that, that is about all we have for today. Kevin? Kevin Guthrie, Director of Emergency Services here in Pasco County. Um, we, again, remain ready to support these guys in whatever they need. Uh, the agencies that are involved, as you see behind me, Florida Forest Service is the lead, Pasco Fire Rescue, uh, Pasco County Sheriff's Office, Florida Highway Patrol, Florida uh, Fish and Wildlife. We have Swift Mud that's assisting um, Parks and Recs. That'll segue me into talking about the Starkey Park specifically. I cannot reiterate enough that Starkey Park is closed. We continue to have citizens and residents go around barricades, go over barricades, climb fences to go into Starkey Park. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Florida Forest Service will stop their operation when they see somebody because it is not safe for them to operate that equipment. So we beg you, do not go into Starkey Park when we have it closed. It's, it is, it, and technically it's trespassing, but the park is completely closed. It is barricaded, it is taped off. Please do not go into Pistarchy Park. Um, Salvation Army is going to be assisting with food and things of that nature. If you're looking to help volunteer and whatnot, go to the Salvation Army. Let them know that you're willing, willing to help provide some type of, whether it's financial or donated resource material, they would be more than happy to take that. With that, that's all I have, and I'll turn it back over to Judy. Yeah, from the Florida Forest Service perspective, I want to thank the Salvation Army. They have been with us since Sunday up at the Water Tower fire in Hernando County. Uh, they're keeping us hydrated. They're keeping us fed. They're, you know, we're, we're driving meals to people in the tractors so they can continue to fight these fires. Um, our community partners behind us, emergency management, both in Pasco and Hernando counties, have been awesome to us. Uh, Hernando Fire Rescue and Pasco Fire Rescue have been uh, just terrific to work with. We truly are in a unified command and we, we are so very, very blessed to have their support. Um, do you have any questions for us? Okay, so right now we have county burn bans in Citrus, Pasco, and Hernando. Um, at this point, it, emergencies are handled at a local level. So the, uh, the local counties are issuing burn bans. When we look at the state of Florida geographically from Pensacola to the Keys, um, some of those places are wetter than we are. Uh, I believe the last storm dropped about nine inches of rain on some ports of North Florida. So just because we're extremely dry here, doesn't mean that we're um, dry in other parts. So it's really, at this point, being hand, handled by the counties at a local level. And, and emergencies are local, so any other questions about when that? you look at the forecast moving forward and see that is, there's minimal to no rain in the forecast for like the next two weeks, how big of a concern is that uh, for you guys? Well, it's been a concern for us. I mean, we were, we've been looking at this for six months. Okay, when we, a bunch of us went up to South Carolina, North Carolina, and Tennessee, you know, in the fall. So we've seen this weather pattern coming. So we've talked about this. Many of the people that have worked with uh, Florida Forest Service, um, John Kern, our field ops four, was here working with us yesterday. I mean, he's had 30 years. Keith Musel, my district manager, has 29. I mean, the people behind me have seen these fire seasons before, in 98, in 2005, 2007, to, you know, 2011. So we, we're very tied to weather. We watch it day to day. Um, again, I want to say that we're a state agency, so I'm very blessed. We can, have, uh, we can move resources around the state for those uh, counties that are wetter and are not running fires. Uh, as we speak, we have a strike team of engines from Florida Forest Service 
on their way down to us. They should be here sometime late this afternoon to help us do mop up and put some water on these fires. So we, we have the ability to move those resources. Is, is forestry going to keep some of this equipment and manpower in place even once these, I guess, four fires across the, the wider area are taken care of? just because it is so dry? Yeah, we, in our district, we cover Citrus, Hernando, Pasco, Lake, and Sumter. We have stations um, throughout those counties. So we're stations, you know, strategically along the coast and inland. Uh, in Pasco County, we have a, actually a, a station right here at Suncoast, and we have one in Dade City. That equipment's always there. But as things progress and we're running fires, we can move forward equipment. Judy, I'd heard there was a National Guard helicopter involved. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. So, yeah, there, there was a report of a National Guard helicopter, and that did come down through state emergency management, through the Office of Emergency Management. So, to, the, to Judy's point earlier, um, burn bans are a local item. They are not a statewide item. So, like the, with this National Guard helicopter, that is a state resource that we're very appreciative that the governor has said, you know what? We're going to put the National Guard on standby, and that's what he did. And they now have an additional helicopter resource available through the state if needed. Um, so in those particular situations, local emergency management, local fire rescue, we look to the state for additional resources. They're doing what they should be doing. When it comes to that burn ban, that's a local issue. The state, the governor does not necessarily, and I'm going to defend the governor right now, he doesn't need to issue the statewide burn ban. That really is a local issue at a local level. So does that answer your question, Josh? Has that helicopter flown, that National Guard helicopter? Uh, I, to my knowledge, it has not flown. It was just yesterday put on standby for deployment. Yeah, I can speak to that. Okay. So the fires that we've been running in Hernando and Pasco County, we did call up uh, U.S. Forest Service Chinook on the um, Hernando County fire, and we have Florida Forest Services, Huey, has been dropping buckets of water. They drop about 300, 325 in that Bambi bucket. So those are the resources. I, I have not been told we had a National Guard helicopter on our fires. Is there a possibility that these fires are being started by, by people intentionally? Uh, I'm not aware of that on any of these fires. Um, I, I, you'd have to talk to the sheriff's office on what they're looking at for arson. So far, like I said, uh, campground is lightning, Silver Palm is lightning. Uh, you heard about the cigarette butt, you know, starting along Dixie on South Wind, and the South Bike Trail is incendiary. And when we say incendiary, that's just human caused. We don't know that it was intentional. It just could have been somebody, you know, with the cigarette matches, that type of thing. It's dry, folks. I mean, it is really dry. Close did that fire get to homes in, on uh, Old Dixie Road in Hudson where it was burning? Like well, it was fire. close. So if it was in you know sheds and outbuildings, so it was uh, it was close. Luckily for us, we had the helicopter here on this fire, so that we could quickly send that Huey from the Silver Palm fire over to Hudson, and they were able to drop uh, 30 buckets on that. Our dozers, we de we sent dozers from here that are already here quickly to Hudson. They were able to get a line around that pretty quickly with the support of the uh, Pasco County Fire Rescue. They were able to do some structure defense. So um, we're very thankful that it, that ended as well as it did yesterday with no homes lost. Do you give homeowners close to these areas any advice when they see smoke and they hear that? Yeah, my first smoke. advice is you need to call 911. Okay, so don't feel foolish if you smell smoke and, you know, we want you to be able to call 911 and check it out. Um, if you go to the Florida Forest Service page um, or you go to the Firewise page, there's some great information about, you know, keeping your lawn clear, um, mowing your yard, keeping trees and leaves and stuff out of your gutters and um, landscaping around your property. We also recommend that it is, um, we're seeing increased activity in wildfires. Wildfires can happen um, depending on the weather and the humidity and the wind. They can pick up speed and they can happen relatively quickly. So um, it, it's always good to have that ready, set, go kit with you, all your important papers. So when we tell you to go, you can go. Any more questions? I don't anticipate, 
uh, having another press briefing today because I think that we're in good shape and as, all, as long as operations continue the way we plan, uh, we, I will uh, send out updates through Media Alert and Twitter. Okay, if something changes, I certainly will let you know. Last questions? Okay, Kev Kevin wants to. Okay. So uh, my, my public information officer reminded me to speak a little bit specifically to the Pasco County burn ban. We talked about it being a local issue, so he wants us to make sure we talk about the burn ban. So again, the burn ban is for all in unincorporated areas of Pasco County. Uh, Pasco County is 92% unincorporated. Um, we are going to be reaching out through our fire marshal's office to the municipalities to ask them to do sister type uh, bills in their jurisdictions to adopt a burn ban for the cities. But in Pasco County, it is uh, no open flames can uh, be caused to be set, intentionally set. Um, it has to be, if somebody is camping, they can use a, an approved, a UL listed approved device so a hibachi grill, a charcoal grill, a Coleman gas grill, those type things to cook their, their, um, their meals. There is no put the rocks around the bottom, open flame, do a campground fire like that. That is, that is not allowed. Trash pile burns are not allowed. Um, it only, we only allow fires that will have a federal or state permit, and that is it. Now, as I said yesterday, the Florida Forest Service does not issue trash pile burns. They do not do that for residents. So do not call the Florida Forest Service if you want to do a, a trash burn at your home. That is not going to be approved. They do not do that. So um, that, that is the more or less the specifics of the burn ban. And if anybody's got any questions on the burn ban, I'll answer those. And seeing none, I do believe now. <laughs> and I want to say, you know, we're trying to be, it's, it's confusing when you're talking about can you burn, can you not burn. I, I understand that this is a good opportunity to educate the public. Again, if you visit our FloridaForestService.com webpage and just type in the little, you know, search button and look under burn authorizations, it's very helpful. And you can tell what we issue permits for and what we do not issue permit, per, permits for. So if you have a question, please do that. And uh, um, we just want you to understand that a little bit better. All right, so hearing no more questions, then I'm gonna close this and, and tell you all to have a good day and we'll get back to fighting some fire. Have a good day. <laughs>